한번 무대 위로 모셔봐야 되겠죠? 자, 어벤져스들 다시 한번 모십니다. 네, 한번 좀 모습을 보이고 있고요. To have you here, and we just it feels so surreal. So, could you please introduce yourself and uh, the roles that you play in the movie towards the Korean and Asian press? Why don't we start with you, Paul? Oh, hi. So, my name is Paul Clementev. So, my mother is Korean actually. So, she told me that Paul means spring and Bong means tiger. And my I was born in spring, spring and my Chinese son is tiger. So, that's it. And uh, I'm in this in the movie. Wow. wow, that's tremendous. And Tom? Uh, I'm Haseo. Lokika uh, Toraba <laughs> Soyo. My name is Tom Middleton, and I play Loki, as you know. And this is my second time in Seoul. Thank you very much for having me again. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I don't know what my name means. Uh, <laughs> it's a. Uh, I think Thomas means twin, and, and that's the root of it. And Hiddleston is an old Scottish name. But thank you for having me. 감사합니다. 오늘 이름 때문에 다 알게 되는데 한국말을 너무 잘하셔서 이렇게 되면 어 컨퍼런스나 홀랜드가 굉장히 부담스러울 수 있겠어요. Yeah, I mean Tom Hiddleston just opened up with and Paul opened up with great explanations of their names. So it must be difficult to introduce yourselves better than Tom. It's uh, they're raising the bar here. I'm a blessed small valley dweller. That's what, that's what my name means. Benedict Cumberbatch is my name. And I play Doctor Strange. And it's a real thrill to be here. Thank you very much. It's my first time in Korea. So I'm very excited to be here. Well done. And Tom Holland. I'm Tom. <laughs> you guys kind of said it all really. <laughs> Um, no, I'm Tom Holland. I play uh, Spider-Man, and uh, and it's a pleasure to be here again. My second time here in Korea, so very excited to be back. And uh, thank you for having us. 저 어제 입국을 하셨는데 정말 놀라운 풍경을 보셨을 겁니다. 공항이 레드 카펫으로 변하는 모습들을 보셨을 텐데 공항에 정말 많은 분들이 오셨는데 특히 베네딕트 컴버베츠는 한국의 첫 방문이신데. So the airport itself was a total red carpet event. It seemed tremendous, and especially for you, Benedict. Uh, I've had the opportunity to interview you before via screen, but it's your first time here. So, so how was it? Um, it was slightly surreal after 13 hours of flying from the UK, but it was it was a wonderful thing. I'd like to use this opportunity though to apologise slightly to the fans. It was. It was sort of unexpectedly large, and I would have liked to have spent more time with them. Um, but it was a little unsafe at points. But, uh, you know, when, when people make that much effort to welcome you who've enjoyed you as Sherlock or as Doctor Strange or anything else they've seen you do, it's, it's, uh, it's very flattering. So I was, I was, yeah, I was humbled. And Paul, well, it's your first time to Korea, we hear, right? And how was it? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm not sure because I used to live in Japan for two years when I was little, and I think I went to Korea for a vacation a few times, but I was the I mean, I was like three, so I don't remember. But I think I came here already. But I'm really happy to be here right now. That's what I know. Welcome back. Thank you. 저희도 무척 행복합니다. 자 그리고 톰 홀랜드는 두 번째 방문입니다. 어떠십니까? And Tom Holland, it's your second time in Korea, and it's it's not been that long since you've been here, right? So how is it? Yeah, I'm having deja vu right now. <laughs> Just upgraded. Um, no, it's amazing to be back. Uh, the welcome at the airport is something that I don't think I'll ever get used to. You know, I mean, you guys do such a great job of making us feel welcome, and and uh, and. We start off our trips with a big smile on our face, which is the perfect way to start a press tour. Um, but for me, to be able to bring Avengers here in Korea is such an honor, especially as the new kid on the block. It's a, it's a pretty surreal experience, um, but uh, it's amazing to be back here. 
네, 저희도 너무 좋습니다. 자, 그리고 톰 히드스턴은 세 번째 분이신데 뭔가 많이 달라졌나요? 어떤가요? 에, 아, 톰. 두 번째. So uh, it's your third visit back. So it, it, it's your, it's your, because uh, you were in Busan, the film festival. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. 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 My second time. Yeah. Yeah. My second time. So yeah. yeah. And it's your third time. So how is it being back for a third time? I I love it here. Um, every time I've come, I've had a, been welcomed in the most warm fashion, and the people are very kind and. Enthusiastic and uh, the uh, never get used to the airport welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, it's lovely to be back. It feels like uh, my time in Busan and my first time in Seoul were quite close together. Um, but it has been five years since I was back in Korea, so it's, uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you. 네. So, this is a question. For you, Benedict, and it's uh, you, you've joined the, the cast uh, relatively evenly compared to uh, Loki or, or the Iron Man or other characters. And, and so, how does it compare to before you you were looking at the Avengers from the outside, and now you are right at the center of it? So, so how is that? You, you must have your own unique perspective, and uh, and there's a huge fandom of the Marvel comic universe, and um, I mean. What do you think that keeps going and what do you think is the merit that keeps this Marvel world alive? Oh, there's a lot of questions there. Um, well, from my own point of view, it's a huge privilege to be part of this ensemble. It's, it's quite astonishing to mark a 10-year anniversary of 10 years' worth of story arcs, characters, of people's lives, um, both on and off screen. This enterprise has started out with a risk and has had nothing but um, increasing success, it's, uh, it's a remarkable family to join and doing strange as the uh, standalone film, the origin story, that was fun enough but then to be so um, involved with this upcoming Avengers film is just uh, the icing on the cake. It's a very different thing, you're, you're standing on set with people who, like Robert Downey Jr. have been playing these characters for nearly a decade and Robert's one of the masters of Silver acting in the world of life today, let alone that particular character which he fits into and plays with with such deft um, ease. And uh, yeah, it's very daunting. And if, first of all, as a fan, you're going, oh my god, I'm on set with Iron Man, I'm on set with all these characters you've enjoyed watching as a fan in the, in the audience. And then you also then have to surmount the idea that you're working with Robert Downey Jr., who you've been a fan with, whether it's Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, or all the way back to Ch Chaplin, and all the way through his career. And then you realize that you are actually colleagues that have to get a day's work done well, and have good fun while doing it. And I tell you what, to, to be on set with Robert is, is a gift in that department, because he's the ultimate leading man, so you feel welcome, you feel encouraged to take risks and fail, you are constantly being pecked by him, um, but you really have to stay on your toes as well because he's so good. Um, so yeah, and in answer to the last question, why are they so good? I, I think it's because, like the greatest of pop culture, like the comics that they originated from, they take the footprint of the zeitgeist, they absorb what's going on in society, they have a serious tone to them at times, but the most powerful thing they do, apart from temple entertainment and a big, epic, almost near futuristic use of special effects in the cinema for spectacle, is that they make you invest with humor and with some depth of character. They're really beautifully written, beautifully structured stories. And that's a thing why they work, in my opinion. Great answer. 근데 저는 대답을 들으면서 느낀 건 놀라운 일이 정말 많지만 지금 이 순간 가장 놀라운 건 베네딕트 컴버베치의 목소리입니다. Yeah, uh, your, your, your answer was amazing, but what was more amazing was your voice. It was just... Early in the morning에 이런 목소리를 낼수 있나요? Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh yeah, nice. I'll do your own machine message for you. <laughs> Thank you. Call me. 자, 그럼. 
So this is a question for you, Tom Holland. Uh, so welcome to the Avengers. Now you're, you've gone beyond just being a member of Stark Industry to being an official member of the Avengers. And, and so we want to know how that feels. And, and we've also heard rumors that you're a big spoiler. You can't keep a secret. And so the word is, they didn't let you know. Uh, they didn't give you access to the script. And is this actually true? Yes, it is true. Yeah, it's entirely true. Um, There's someone from Marvel over there on the controls on his yeah. bike. Because it says the surprise wasn't like a laser on my head, like I'm about to be taken out. Um, no, I think the amazing thing for me about these movies is Avengers 1, I was the first in line to go and see it. You know, I was a huge fan and, and uh, it was uh, a really big part of my life going to see these movies and enjoying it with my friends. And now that I can sort of stare at my ugly mug on that poster, it's uh, it's pretty incredible. I mean, especially to be 21 and to call yourself an Avenger is kind of a surreal thing to be able to say. Um, but as far as spoilers go, I am dreadful and uh, I've admitted to my mistakes. <laughs> and it won't happen again. So don't try to get anything out of me. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> 지금 그 스포일러에 대해서는 감독님도 워낙에 반복히 부탁을 많이 하셨기 때문에 여기까지 이제 이야기를 하고요. 누굴까요, 진짜? So, so the question is for you, uh, Tom, because you've been with the MCU uh, with Marvel for ten years now. I think it's eight or nine. Eight or nine years. Yeah. So uh, you, you've been with them almost from the beginning, and in this movie there are over thirty. Mega stars that, that you're working with, and who's the person that you really think, oh, this guy's an actual superhero? I mean, besides the role that you actually plays, the, the person who you think is so befitting the character that this person probably is that person in actual life. Can you call me so? Including yourself, including yourself. Yeah. Definitely not me. Um, it's firstly, it has been one of the great privileges of my life to be in the Marvel Universe for as long as I have. Um, when I was cast as Loki in Thor in 2009, uh, Marvel had only made the first Iron Man. And in many respects, uh, Kenneth Branagh's imagination um, for what Asgard could be was something that Marvel would admit they were rather nervous about. They wondered if audiences would accept the Marvel Universe in a cosmic dimension, in space, in, in somewhere beyond <clears throat> our planet. And now we have Guardians of the Galaxy, we have people who can travel through time and in fact change the dimension of time. Um, and, and actually the Marvel Universe is a truly universal um, culture. And to watch it grow and expand as a fan and an audience member, because I haven't, I sort of had five years out of the Marvel Universe making other things, has been amazing. So, and, and very exciting. Um, the films have got bigger and braver, with more risks and more colour, and um, I take my hat off to Marvel for that. In terms of who is most like their character, um, I mean, <laughs> so Tom Holland. Is, well, yeah, he can do the gymnastics. Tom he Holland is, is, a, is an acrobat. And, wow. Um, I mean, a proper, brilliant, athletic gymnast. This yeah. is someone who can do a lot of what you see Spider-Man doing. Not rope swinging down Fifth Avenue. He doesn't. I don't believe he has spider ropes <laughs> inside <laughs> his. Oh no, he doesn't. Thing. We used to joke though on set about Chris Hemsworth um, in the first one was the rest of us pretending to be superheroes and we would stand and look at Chris and, and um, he's, he's just so huge. made of some sort of different material. Um, yeah. So he is Thor. Chris has said he is Thor. Thor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Tom, do you agree with what uh, Tom just said? Yeah, I feel like I've been playing Spider-Man in my bedroom since I was like five. So I feel pretty in tune with him. He's just a kid with an American accent who swears as oh. as not as much as I do. Um, but yeah, so I definitely feel like uh, Peter Parker and I are very similar. Yeah. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, Spider Man. We are in the presence of Spider Man. Yeah. Well, we need to do a demonstration. I thought it was like, <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Thank you, though. <laughs> so this is a question for you, Benedict, and it's that. Uh, well, there are, there's a huge fan for you, not, not just for Doctor Strange, but also Charlotte, and, and, and a lot of traditional roles that you play, like uh, Hamlet and also Frankenstein. And so, do you know that uh, there's this huge fandom? For you here in Korea, and they really enjoy your work. And plus, you get to put on costumes and play these special roles. So, so what do you enjoy so much about playing Doctor Strange? Uh, I'm I'm very aware of my South Korean fandom, and they are uh, genial, polite, um, devoted, artistic, smart, and uh, very loyal. And and they've been with me for a long time. And like you say, they've traversed. Not just the iconic worlds, but some of all the well, actually, they are all kind of all the iconic worlds I guess, and they're not really well. But um, anyway, they come with me on a journey, and sometimes physically as well. I fly all the way to England to see me in the theatre. Yeah, I mean, there's a huge amount of effort that goes into it, as was seen at the airport yesterday for for all of us. Yeah, and I'm so I'm very genuinely grateful to be here to say um, thank you, um, and. As far as wearing costumes, that's kind of that's kind of what I do for a living. Um, I always sigh a bit when I see cosplayers, mainly because I think it's extraordinary the amount of effort that they go to. And the other way is because I know how much effort they've gone to because of doing it as a day job. So that always blows me away when I see fans dressing up. Um, but yes, do I? I don't really, uh, yeah, I'm not really sure where the costume question is going, to be honest. Uh, so, so what's the greatest, what, what's the most fun about being on a costume, playing Doctor Strange? I think, well, I, well, I remember when I had my fitting for Doctor Strange, the first time the whole ensemble was put together in the cloak and everything, and I looked in the mirror and I just went... <laughs> I just started laughing. And Alex, our costume designer, who's, who's been with Marvel almost from the beginning, if not the beginning, just folded her arms and went, oh yeah, I've seen that look before, I'd be having a superhero moment. So it was just that kid thing of going, oh my god, I'm actually, I am going to play a superhero. Um, and even at the tender age of whatever it was, 38, 39 at the time, I, uh, it's, it's a giddy, a dizzy moment for a for an actor. It's fun. So everybody is actually wearing something very tight, but you get a nice loose cloak. Damn right. <laughs> it's it's heavy. If I'm, you know, as, there's a good collective noun for actors that we're a, a moan of actors, you know, like a herd of sheep. Or so we're a moan of actors. So my moan, my complaint, would be that it's a little bit heavy. Poor me. Um, no, I'm joking aside, it's it's a beautiful costume, and I can move in it. And I do often look at other actors in other superhero costumes and go, that's that's a lot harder to work in. So I'm lucky. I know that. Uh, so we've got two questions, uh, one for Spider-Man and one for you, Paul. Uh, 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 and uh, it seems like, well, speaking of costumes and dressing up, uh, it, uh, it seems like the spider suit is really tight, and we saw in another interview that uh, it's quite uncomfortable to get a new suit and, uh, in, in, in the Infinity Wars, and we want to know how that fits. And, and uh, before we give you some time to prepare for that, Paul, you also have a really tight suit as well, and you seem to also go through a lot of makeup and, and, and costume. So, how does it feel to play the role of Mentis in, in all that makeup and costume? Should I start? Tumblr and the top. Do you want to start? Let's start with you, Tom. Okay. Um, yeah, my suit in a uh, Infinity War looks really awesome up there, but in real life is really lame. Um, it's, I basically wear these like grey pyjamas with balls on them which glow oh. and they then turn that into the new Fantastic Spider-Man costume. But it's really embarrassing for me when I'm on set and Benedict's wearing his get up and he looks amazing, everyone else looks really cool and then I just roll onto set in these weird pyjama like velcro thing. And the thing is, is everything sticks to me so I keep pulling like parts of the set to pieces and 
So my suit isn't uh, quite as cool as my first one, but uh, it looks really cool up there, so I'm very happy. Yeah, what's important is that it looks good mm -hmm. in the film and you. How, how is it with your costume? Um, I mean, it's not very comfortable, but it's okay. I have to wear a corset underneath, so it, it's as if I was doing a period movie from the 17th century. So I'm an alien from the 17th century, maybe. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, it's weird because I have to wear contact lenses, so it covers my whole eye, it gives me a tunnel vision, so it makes me a little bit claustrophobic and in my own world, and I think it works for the character. And, um, and uh, for the antennas, I just have the beginning of the antennas, so I can't forget about them, and people remind me that I have something weird on my face, but other than that, you know, it's, yeah, it's fine. I think when Paul and Dave have their contact lenses in, no one falls over more than they do. The set we were on was so rocky, and you'd see Paul like all the time. <laughs> oh, so that wasn't acting. <laughs> yeah, but not, not, you know, they can also like do the CGI thing, so I don't have to wear them anymore. So you know, yeah. Technology. Yeah. Uh, so this is a question for you, Benedict. Uh, it's your first visit to Korea and uh, received a warm welcome, but we also heard that you had a bit of personal time as well. So did you get to enjoy uh, a little bit of Korea? Did I? Did I have personal time? <laughs> I must have missed the per unless it was when I was sleeping, that was personal time. I, I haven't known. I was in a steel tube at 30,000 feet for 13 hours, landed, went into an airport, got into a car, came to a hotel, and that's that's... Tomorrow, however, I might have some personal time. I'd, I'd love to get out and see, um, but I'd like to see a Buddhist temple. I'd love to go and see maybe the palace and just walk the streets and see what Korea feels like on, on the ground. Um, it's always wonderful, but sort of slightly removed when you go on these press tours. You have a very sort of insular experience of these countries, and it's, it's slightly torturous, again, to moan about it, but not really, really. Um, you want, you want to get out there, you want to see the street food, meet the people and, and see the sights, so hopefully I might find a bit of time tomorrow to do that. Um, yeah. So this question uh, is actually for, uh, for all of you, but uh, you know, yeah. it, it's about Stanley. And uh, we're, we're quite interested, and we'd also like to ask you Paul and also uh, Roki. And uh, so it seems like he appears in, in every Marvel film, uh, but and it seems like there's also a scene with, uh, with uh, Spider-Man in, in this movie as well. But we want to know what type of influence does he have on the set? What type of vibe does he bring? And um, how passionate is he about the Marvel comic universe as well as the films? And, and we also know, uh, as a fellow actor, I mean, how is he as an actor? I mean, do you think he'll get any nominations for the Academy Awards, or not quite there yet? So, uh, so oh, you I, I met him twice, and he was just—he has so much energy. It's just—it's—he's incredible. He's so inspiring, and he's—he's uh, he's really fun, and he, I don't know. He's um, yeah, he's really nice to uh, to be around, and I mean, you know, he he brought so much to the comic books. Um, world and um, I don't know. It was a pleasure to meet him and to get to, uh, yeah, to get to spend some time with him a little bit. Yeah. And Tom, my experience of him has been that he's a very generous man, and the world that we inhabit as actors began in his imagination, and the Marvel Studios um, at the beginning with Iron Man thought it would be a nice way to express their gratitude by giving Stan a cameo in every film. And it's become a tradition now. And he's, he's played truck drivers and waiters and all kinds of different characters. Astronauts, I think. Um, and um, you can feel it on the set when he comes on. The, the actors and the crew are all very grateful that he's still engaged and interested in in seeing what we're doing, and he's very, very generous because we, in the in the movie world, we've changed a lot, but he seems to accept those changes and and, and celebrate them. Yes, yeah, Stan and Steve did come, and the touch Stanley on set is is an amazing thing, and he's sharp as 
attack. He's so quick, witted, and, and funny, um, and puts everyone at ease, and is really complimentary and generous, like Tom was saying. And you do feel a little bit like the godfather of all of it has walked into the room, but you feel then in a heartbeat put at ease by his support and his generosity and his compliments and um, yeah, he's played every single role going, so I think he makes a pretty damn fine character. I'm no film critic, but I think he's very good. It's always a joy, isn't it? It's, the, it's that nugget that you always go, ah, there he is. And it's, it's one of the things you look forward to with the Marvel film that I've seen. Him. One may continue. I think for me, one of my big challenges is I need to convince Stan Lee that I'm Spider-Man. You know, like if I can convince Stan that I'm Spider-Man, then I've done my job right, and he couldn't have been more complimentary about my performance, which for me was the sort of final full stop that was like, great, I've done it, I've done what I needed to do. Um, but I actually know what his cameo is in this movie, and I'm trying so hard not to tell you guys what it is, so I'm going to just show you right now. Blow the mic. Yeah, oh, it's okay. So in Guardians of the Galaxy 2, we see your superpowers. Now you can be what people are thinking and feeling, and you utilize those powers. And, uh, but it seems like there's a bit more depth to your character, uh, and you get a chance to show off those superpowers in the Avengers. And, and what type of character do you play, without any spoilers, of course, in, in the Avengers, to, to really showcase those superpowers? Yeah, of course I'm going to use my superpowers. And, uh, and the character, um, Mantis, has a little bit more confidence, you know? So, yeah, she's going to show her superpowers. But I can't say anything, so what, what can I say? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm a good girl, I'm not like Tom. I'm not going to just like say things that I'm going to regret after. <laughs> there, there aren't any new powers that you can talk about? Or? I don't think so. I, I don't think so. No. Okay. So we're <laughs> we can change the question. 그러면 사람의 마음을 읽는 능력을 가지셨잖아요. 지금 톰 홀랜드가 어떤 생각을 하고 있을까요? So as you can be mine, let's let's see what Tom Holland is thinking right now. What what, what is what is Tom thinking? Let, let's try to apply your powers there. I feel like he's uh, he's hungry. <laughs> you can check him and see. What do you want to eat? Bulgogi? Bibimbap? Oh! <laughs> Kimchi? Yeah, yeah, he's going to eat all that. Oh, my God. Thank you. 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 질문해 주신 기자님들께도 너무나 감사드리고요. 대답을 해주신 배우님들께도 감사의 말씀을 드리겠습니다.